and welcome to Rising. We have a GOP debate to recap, so let's get right to it. <laughs> All right. Well, Robbie, the top five 2024 GOP presidential frontrunners, save, of course, former President Donald Trump, met on the debate stage last night in Miami for the third time this cycle. One of the night's biggest moments came when Vivek Ramaswamy broke the fourth wall and went after GOP chairwoman Ronna McDaniel. I think there's something deeper going on in the Republican Party here, and I am upset about what happened last night. We've become a party of losers at the end of the day. We have a cancer in the Republican establishment. Let's speak the truth. I mean, since Ronna McDaniel took over as chairwoman of the RNC in 2017, we have lost 2018, 2020, 2022, no red wave that never came. We got trounced last night in 2023. And I think that we have to have accountability in our party. For that matter, Ron, if you want to come on stage tonight, you want to look the GOP voters in the eye and tell them you resign, I will turn over my, yield my time to you. And frankly, look, the people there are cheering for losing in the Republican Party. Think about who's moderating this debate. This should be Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, and Elon Musk. We'd have 10 times the viewership asking questions that GOP primary voters actually care about and bringing more people into our party. You think the Democrats, I and mean, we've got Christian Welker here, you think the Democrats would actually hire Greg Gutfeld to host a Democratic debate? They wouldn't do it. And so the fact of the matter is, I mean, Christian, I'm going to use this time because this is actually about you and the media and the corrupt media establishment. Ask you the Trump-Russia collusion hoax that you pushed on this network for years. Was that real or was that Hillary Clinton made up disinformation? Answer the question. Go. Now, as you may have guessed, that wasn't Vivek's only fiery moment from last night. Here he is stoking the coals of his feud with Nikki Haley. Well, I, I, I want to laugh at why Nikki Haley didn't answer your question, which is about looking at families in the eye. In the last debate, she made fun of me for actually joining TikTok while her own daughter was actually using the app for a long time. So you might want to take care of your family first. Leave my daughter out of your voice. Your adult daughter. The next generation of Americans are using it. And that's actually the point. You have her supporters crapping her up. That's fine. Here's the truth. You're just the easy scum. answer. Ramaswamy later hit Haley's hawkish approach to diplomacy. Let's watch. The matter is the Republican Party is not that much better. You have the likes of Nikki Haley, who stepped down from her time at the UN. Bankrupt or in debt is, was her family. Then she becomes a military contractor. She joins the board of Boeing and otherwise, and is now a multimillionaire. So I think that that's wrong when Republicans do it or Democrats do it. That's the choice we face. Do you want a leader from a different generation who's gonna put this country first? Or do you want Dick Cheney in three-inch heels? All right, Mr. In which case, we've got two of them on stage Mr. tonight. Ramaswamy, thank you. Senator, uh, Senator Scott. Then later in the debate, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was pressed on his crackdown on anti-Israel student groups, or perhaps better framed, pro-Palestine student groups. Let's take a listen. I have friends here in Florida who their kids do not feel safe even going to university campus at all outside of the state of Florida. You have Jewish students fleeing for their lives at Cooper Union. Joe Biden should have the Department of Justice on these college campuses and holding the universities accountable for civil rights violations. When you have, you should not have money going to these places. I already acted in Florida. We had a group, Students for Justice of Palestine. They said they are common cause with Hamas. They said, we're not just in solidarity, this is what we are. We deactivated them. We're not gonna use Tate tax dollars. Ramaswamy answered DeSantis's stance on that. Let's watch his response. Anti-Semitism to irrelevance. These kids, they have no idea what the heck they're even talking about when they're siding with Hamas over Israel. They are fools. But I also want to caution here, if we go the direction of Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley, with whom I respectfully disagree on this issue, pro-censorship, telling student groups to disband, mark my words, soon they will say if you question a vaccine and its side effects, you're a bioterrorist. Soon they will say that if you show up at a school board meeting, you're a domestic terrorist. Soon if they say that J6 prisoners should be released, you're an insurrectionist terrorist. So that's where this road ends. We don't quash this with censorship because that creates a worse underbelly. We quell it through leadership by calling it out. These university administrators have lost their way and we need leadership at the top in the United States of America that restores our founding values and that has no place for this kind of anti-Semitic hate. That's 
So interesting, Ramaswamy there breaking with Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley and really all of the rest of the candidates who are very for cancel culture and censoring on students uh, for their anti-Israel views. Um, Rama, uh, specifically on the, what the DeSantis order for the college student protesters in Florida, that was something uh, we, I think he first addressed on our show when we interviewed him, because it was fresh in the news cycle. And he said he, he hadn't heard yet about the DeSantis order, but it sounded like something he would oppose. And there he was uh, reaffirming that he does disagree with it. Um, the rest of them were, you know, very very keen to, I don't know, sick the exact forces of cancel culture that they decry in all other situations. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable that you have the majority of the Republican field willing to stand up there and say colleges should be defunded if students at those colleges uh, protest an ongoing genocide, that colleges should be defunded uh, if Jewish students on campus feel unsafe. I have to ask the question, would you also say you should defund colleges and send in the DOJ if black students at, a, at say, one of the Florida schools that Ron DeSantis has um, promoted his own ideological agenda at and canceled African-American studies programs at, if they feel unsafe, should those schools be defunded if they receive federal funding? Should you send the DOJ in to investigate those schools? why would we want schools? Biden's DOJ probing student Comfort and, and more, speech and more, levels, how would that be helpful? And moreover, how are we deciding whose students' right. safety is of concern? Again, we've spent now a decade decrying the fragility of the American student. The right has done exactly that. And they said to black students, gay students, people across the identity spectrum, Latino students, women students, that we shouldn't have additional Title IX protections, that all of that stuff was ridiculous. Why they, they yelled at women for quoting rape statistics about how often sexual assault was at campus. All of those things were seen as evidence of this generate the young generation's inappropriate insensitivity. So I think all of the people on that stage have to ask the question why they feel so differently about Jewish students. Right. And Ramaswamy was, I think, very right to point out how this could so easily, it, it has already in the past been weaponized against people with contrarian views all over the place. We, if conservatives have some contrarian views on exactly the subjects he was mentioning, it just seems like um, very, very foolish um, direction to take. So everything. what do you make of the fact that Vivek Ramaswamy took, I think, the right position on that uh, with respect to student censorship on took campus? The right position on a couple then, things. But then as absolutely gung-ho about not just censoring TikTok on an individual level, but canceling the app altogether. Yeah, uh, there have been very few people um, in really in either party. Banning TikTok is a very bipartisan and seemingly cross ideological um, uh, uh, cause right now. Um, I've been glad to see Senator Rand Paul was one person who stood up and said that this absolutely seems like a speech issue and giving the government this power would be very bad. Um, it's frustrating to me that um, that this social, when they recognize how all of the pressures on social media companies that our government has done has been bad for speech, and now you want to give our government even more power to police social media or ban companies nilly-willy. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a frustrating blind spot for me. Even people like Josh Halley, I mean, all of these people are calling for a TikTok ban, and it yeah. especially seems pernicious because these calls have ramped up in the context of TikTok being a place where so many young people obviously are, and young people disproportionately having sympathy with Freeing, freeing Palestine has caused a lot of folks now to say, specifically, we need to ban TikTok because it, it's only conceivable that people on that app would have a bias toward the interests of the the human rights interests of Palestinians because somehow they're being diluted by China. And it's giving it's giving Russian misinformation is causing people to want to vote for Donald Trump. It's the exact same thing. And the fact that all of these people, even right there in the clip, one of the clips we watched, Vivek Ramaswamy called out Ron and Daniel, uh, called it out the network rather for doing all that Russia hoax misinformation, turning around and doing the exact same thing about young kids on TikTok who want to free Palestine is really a remarkable about face. Yeah, let's talk more about uh, how Ramaswamy went after the RNC and the moderators and said, you know, that Tucker, Elon, and Joe Rogan should host a debate. Obviously, I think Vivek draws support from that crowd of younger um, online right-leaning people um, and speaks very well to what they're concerned about and is absolutely right about the out-of-touch nature of a lot of Republican elites, and again, I agree with him on what he was calling out the media for. My only issue, though, is, you know, he's saying Rana 
McDaniel took over and then everything started going bad for the Republicans, was there maybe some other Republican political figure who has loomed very large over the party since 2017 <laughs> who maybe possibly would deserve some share of the blame for what has happened? That's a really good point. Name rhymes with grump. Yeah. The, he who should not be named at this debate. It was interesting. They didn't even try to pin them down on one of those why are you better than Trump questions. There, I mean, there, there was mm -hmm. one that was built in to the question, but not like give me a direct answer as to what you think about Trump not being here or is he a coward or anything like that. And I think it's because they clearly refused to answer it when those efforts were made at earlier debates. So the moderator question, I thought, was kind of, it, it, felt, it felt like a pure stunt. Isn't it always the case that these networks hire people from their network to moderate the debate? He wants them to have broken from tradition and gotten Tucker Carlson and Elon Musk mm -hmm. and who was the third one? Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Or something. Okay, that well, that's just, it's a clear pander. Maybe it works. Yeah. Whatever. Fine. He can say it. Framing it uh, younger, younger moderators that are closer to uh, what the public wants. All of those people are older than Nikki Haley, who he very specifically called out as a person in a different generation as him who doesn't know how to meet the needs I mean, I it's of not, the public. They're like 12 years apart. Well, sure, but I, I think <laughs> their audiences are, well, Nikki Haley doesn't have an audience. I, they understand, I mean, Nikki Haley is, her, her thinking is older in that it comes from the neoconservative pre-Trump wing of what the Republican Party was, where people like Tucker and Elon and to some extent Joe Rogan, even though I don't think he really even classifies himself as a conservative, are speaking to these newer, more populist, more anti-interventionist energies on the right, and it would be helpful to hear from them. You know, we heard from Hugh Hewitt was one of the moderators. He's a conservative. He's kept asking them, like, specifically how many ships they're going to build. <laughs> like, he, he was playing Axis and Allies and wanted to know where they were. I mean, that is not... I'm not going to say that's not, those, those aren't important questions, but well, it, it seems very, it, fairly granular to I, me. I, I agree, but it also was pretty revealing how there was complete unanimity uh, across the board, if I recall correctly, correct me if I'm wrong. Everyone right. said more ships. Even the people like Vivek right. Ramaswamy, who hold themselves out as being anti-interventionists, right. limited war powers, all of those kinds of things, when asked specifically... Right. He says, we need to build more well, ships. And that is, where a t that is how a Tucker could have been useful, because he could have... He could have probed that enthusiasm for more military robustness, more sending ships everywhere from a conservative but less interventionist America First perspective. The yeah. America First perspective is just totally absent. You know, they're talking. They're talking about all all about Israel's defense. All about Vivek. You know told the truth on Ukraine, the rest didn't. Um, but it was, it was a lot about other countries' securities and issues, and I, I, was, I was not hearing, because they were not prompted to do so, how, how does this matter for the safety and security of the American people? Right, and I just, I don't want it to let, I don't want it to get lost in the weeds. Vivek Ramaswamy, just like everyone on that stage, is rooting to invest more in spending American tax dollars on our military. There is no difference between saying, I want to send these weapons to Israel that it costs this much money in, in a $105 billion package and saying, I want to invest in all of these American ships that are going to go and do our policing around the world. It's still American tax dollars being funneled through these um, defense contractors, these private companies, and the money going off the door, having an inflationary effect, driving up the cost of raw goods, materials that are used to build those weapons, driving up the cost of oil that is used to build those weapons, and not positively impacting the interests of the American people. And I do think folks like Vivek Ramaswamy, who claim to be anti-interventionist and claim to be anti-war, except for Israel, apparently, need to be really pressed on those questions. Before we wrap, I do think we have to weigh on one of the spicier moments of the night where, again, Vivek Ramaswamy um, said to Nikki Haley that she needed to take care of her own family with respect, first, with respect to this, this TikTok question, accusing her seemingly of not being a, uh, being inconsistent, perhaps not being a conscious enough parent, given that her own child was on uh, TikTok while she was saying that she wanted to ban it. The audience didn't seem to really love that remark. Do you think that he's going to get very far with those kind of jabs at Nikki Haley and the gender dynamics there, but also the comment about, uh, do we want Dick Cheney in three-inch heels? I Is thought he was talking about Ron DeSantis there. <laughs> Um, look, it would have been a better job. He's an abrasive person. I think that's clear. He's uh, he's very high energy, and um, I don't know how people perceive when he comes off with Nikki Haley. I think a lot of I think Nikki Haley fans 
agree that he, what did she say? He's scum and hate him, and he has made it very personal. Um, also, though, he does have serious policy differences with her that, and, and some of those I would take his side on. So, you know, at the end of the day, they're running for president. They're not running to be best friends with each other, and it does get personal. It's certainly gotten way more personal on the debate stage with Trump in the past than it is even between the two of them. So I think, I suspect Republican voters know that this is a battle for, like, the future of the country, and not that absolutely everything is fair game, but that they were still keeping at the level of discourse. Uh, now, I doesn't, now, I don't think it matters that her daughter is on TikTok. I mean, I don't think it matters that anyone's on TikTok, I do frankly. wonder how women, and I, I'm sure there'll be some exit, you know, viewer mm -hmm. information about this, but I do wonder how women received that comment and the three-inch heel, heel comment. I can't think of another moment in a presidential debate where someone has impugned, even implicitly, the parenting of another person on stage. And the fact that it happened to ha have uh, happened with a a woman, when women's parenting is often called into question when they're professionals in the workforce in the way that men aren't. The only other conversation I remember about someone's child was this kind of funny moment during the 2020 debates where Bill de Blasio says, I have a black child, so I understand this. And Cory uh, Cory Booker is like, I don't, wait, wait I'm, a, I'm a black man. I am a black man. Because <laughs> he doesn't have kids. But that, that's as close as I can think of, of people's like parenting mm. even coming up. If I were to give Nikki Haley advice, um, I would say she should probably hit him back because he, he sort of he uh, impugned how she made her money too, mm -hmm. and, and she should get into. Everyone lets go with Vivek. It's there's, crazy. There's right. There's some far, there's pharmaceutical connections yes, issues a, to get into. It seems pretty well reported out that it was a, as a, was a grift that his mom, who is a doctor, a, a geriatric mm -hmm. psychi psychiatrist, I believe, but they basically found some uh, psychi psychiatric drugs, some drug for old people that failed some clinical trial or wasn't looking very auspicious. They bought it, rebranded it, repackaged it, went on like Kramer and sold the drug. The stock went up, they dumped it. And it wasn't actually a useful product. It was a pump and dump scheme, pretty plainly on its face. And so the idea that he is going to impute how anybody else makes money, I agree with his critique of Nikki Haley, but are you the one with the standing to make it? Yeah. All right, we will continue talking about this later in the show and we'll have more rising in just a minute.